Hey everybody, I'm Beebs Kelly. Welcome back to another fashion edition. I am so happy to see your beautiful face today. We are taking a look at Megan's notorious green cape dress today, the one the internet likes to call the Kermit dress. You will not believe the tea I uncovered about it. Also covering the importance of family dress codes when, when you are doing photographed events or gatherings, like for example, weddings and graduations coming up. This is the perfect time to see exactly why a dress code or a color scheme for those events is important. You will have much better looking pictures when you do events. But we also have a look from her that was perfection from head to toe and it actually includes a lot of great tricks that we can use when we're styling ourselves. In today's video you will notice I am including style profile cards. It's basically just pointing out the style concerns or needs if you will that someone has in regards to their body type that can help them dress better. I hope it helps you guys to recognize if you have a similar style concern. All right, are you ready to get into this green with envy vibe with me? Let's do it. At first glance, I actually like a lot about it, honestly. When I first saw it, I was like, ooh, a statement. And then the more I looked at it, the worse and worse it got. The color is actually really pretty on her. It's a good color for her skin tone and what, but she was told to wear red, white, and blue because it's Commonwealth Day. And that's a tradition that they have. It's what the queen liked to do. And it makes sense. But it's also an example of what I was just talking about, how color schemes are actually really important. Because like, look here, uh, red and green, it looks like a Christmas service rather than Commonwealth service. If she had just worn like blue, it would have been fine. And this actually would have looked great because it would have been blue, red, blue, and white. Her, Sophie, and Kate. But no, she had to throw a wrench in the machine and wear green. This cape, it literally looks suffocating. I mean, her short neck means it takes very little fabric to quickly overwhelm the neck area. I have the same problem. It just feels uncomfortable to even look at that mountain of fabric around her neck. So when you look at it and you're taking it in, your eye tends to drift towards the cape, but also straight to the excessive seams that are like all over the place and they're bunching in the torso. Another clue of an ill-fitting dress, this huge poof at her back. What is happening here? Amelia Wickstead is the designer of this, but she also has done lots of designs for Kate uh, or Catherine, Princess of Wales, as well as for Meghan. Meghan wore an Amelia Wickstead dress in the look that I'm featuring later in this video that is actually really, really nice. After Meghan got married, she had made a comment, Amelia did, about the wedding dress and the look, you know, the hair coming down around the face, like it's a royal wedding, you should have your hair pulled back, basically, and talking about the dress a little bit. Then once Meghan and Harry, because at this point when she wore this, Meghan and Harry had already announced that they were going to leave and they were done with the royal family. And then Meghan comes in this, like, literal disaster, which was made custom. It was not like a design that Amelia had for sale. It was something she made custom for Meghan. So perhaps the fittings and whatnot weren't going real well. Was it on purpose? We know Kate wears a lot of those designs, which is great for Amelia's business. So, I mean, perhaps, perhaps some of the tea had been spilled around. Overall, it's just not a good look. Let's break it down a little bit and see exactly what went wrong and why this did not work out so well. I do like the length of it. The dress just looks too tight everywhere except for the arms. There's this huge poof up on top of like her shoulder area along the collarbone area, which is very strange. I literally have never seen a garment do that, but it's because it was not tailored wide enough for her shoulder. We also have a bra outline. Again, hilariously unnecessary. She could have just worn a normal t-shirt bra or something really, really simple under this dress. There's no reason to do a weird strapless bra that's too small. Bunching upwards around the waist here where you can see it's almost like sliding up or riding up, probably because the waistline was too tight and not in the correct position. It should have been a little bit lower. It also looks like it's pulling at the thighs really, really tightly. Like this fabric is just struggling. It's not a stretchy fabric. This fabric looks to be one that is prone to wrinkling really no matter what. And it also looks really stiff. It looks like it's not soft at all. Um, so it might have even been a very uncomfortable outfit to wear. It just overall reads unfinished. You know, I actually like the intention behind the seams around the waist where it goes out towards the hips because they actually would give 
more of an illusion of an hourglass type of shape, but the execution here just doesn't really perform because the fabric is gathering and bunching and stretching and doing so much weird stuff. This hat, I, I don't know, would it have been fine if the dress wasn't so bad? The shape of the hat is okay for her face, honestly. It's just the design of it that might not really work, and she may not be very confident wearing fascinators or hat. You just have seams all over the place. It, it looks like it's unlined, but it is lined. The fabric seems like a poor choice overall, and of course her undergarments were not right. The tighter a dress is, the more structure it needs in order to look nice. We see Kate in flared dresses with clearly like high quality fabric that will not wrinkle up, but we also see her in tighter dresses, particularly when she isn't gonna go sit down for a long service. She manages to not be a wrinkly, bunchy mess, and the key is undergarments, lining, fabric, and structure, but also occasion. If you know you're going to go somewhere like a service and sit down for a while, and then you're going to get up and walk back out and get more pictures taken, you need to choose fabrics that are not wrinkly prone. This dress might have worked a little bit better if she was just doing a walkabout, but it would have been a weird choice for a walkabout because of the design. Cape, you know, I just, I don't know what to say. It's a statement, but Commonwealth Day is not really the place for a statement piece. It reminds me of like a towel tied onto a kid, the way Way that it lays. It's just so suffocating. I can't stand it. If the draping had laid flat along her shoulders and neck, it may have looked better, but geez almighty, I don't know. Now, the biggest qualm I'm having about this in this moment is that she did not match her shoes to any piece of the outfit whatsoever. <sighs> when we know how much she spent on clothing, that is a mistake where there is absolutely no excuse. Go get those shoes in a dark color, woman. Come on. This is a great example of how to choose the right shoes or handbag for your outfit. If your handbag is tonal, like this example here with Megan, so by that I mean the handbag is a dark shade of green, like really dark green, and her outfit is all green. So that is tonal. Very similar to monochromatic, it's just you're using different shades or lightness and darkness of the same color rather than it being all the exact same color. So since she has on this tonal look from hat or fascinator all the way down to the bottom of her dress, including her handbag, is greens, then her shoes needed to be green. She could have got away with black a lot better than nude. Now, if you're at a loss and you only have a couple of pairs of heels and nothing is working or nothing matches, then nude can be your safe bet. At the end of the day, if it's nude and it matches your skin tone really well, like these do here for her, then that's fine. That's your backup, that's your go-to. We don't have millions to spend on our wardrobe, so it's okay. I will say though, I am glad about the size of the handbag. We have seen her with ginormous handbags before and they just don't look good with how petite she is and how skinny she is. A huge handbag just looks a bit bulky. So here is the example that I wanted to show you. This is Michelle Rodriguez. She has a similar style concerns to Megan. This style of dress, something inspired by this but with long sleeve, like piping. It gives the illusion of an hourglass. And as you can see, her waistline is not placed right below her boobs. It's a little bit lower. Just imagine, imagine for a second that instead of that green dress, we have no cape. We tint it blue, like a nice dark blue, and then have this piping that we see on Michelle Rodriguez on Megan's dress that's dark blue now in the same color as the dress. So it looks almost like seams, but it's like raised piping throughout the dress. That would have looked really nice for Megan on this day, especially if she managed to get matching shoes, handbag, and fascinator. So we could have fixed it if once again, we changed literally almost everything. Problem with having all those seams and bunching and stuff running all over the place, it's not just that it can lean into sloppy or messy or chaotic looking, it's that you just don't know what to look at. Your eyes bouncing all over the place and it just doesn't have the same impact as a professional, nice, clean, sleek look in which your face and whatever it is you're there to do is the showcase. Instead, it's this distracting sort of 
bad outfit. A good way to avoid this is to take a picture from a little ways away at about maybe waist or chest height and see what this looks like. If you're having an important day, this is not something you should do every single day that's excessive, but if you have an event or you're going to be photographed or you're getting family pictures or weddings, etc., when you have a special occasion and you want to look your best, take a picture of yourself from afar where you can see your shoes all the way up to the top of your head and look and see where your eye goes goes to first, see if your accessories and whatnot are cohesive, and it can just help you edit your outfits and to make sure that they look their best. And if you are going to an event where you're going to be sitting for a long period of time, try to find something that doesn't wrinkle or take some precautions to make sure that you don't end up wrinkly, if you can. I mean, for Christ's sakes, if we all had a million dollar budget, I bet most of us would do a better job than that. I'm just saying. So let's move on to something refreshing, okay? This was an outfit that she wore that looked amazing. The square neckline is something that's going to draw the eye because it's a nice strong angle. And then the eye will go to that belt. It has some gold off to one side, so it has a little bit of asymmetry there. So that's going to enhance the effect of a waistline. The dress does not have any sort of a big flare. It's not super voluminous. It's just right. It's just enough volume to balance her shoulders. It does not exaggerate the thinness of her legs or the width of her waist at all. This is a very nice, well put together look. Also notice how her straps are thicker up here. She doesn't have super, super thin straps. It's not a spaghetti strap vibe. They're not quite cap sleeve, but they are a nice thick strap, which also helps balance her shoulders because it breaks that line up a little bit. She also has on small jewelry. She has a small handbag and her shoes, handbag and jewelry all match because the handbag has gold hardware on it. She has gold in her earrings it looks like so this is just very cohesive and then one side of her hair is back showing off her beautiful facial facial features and it still has some softness to it while it's down everywhere else in the blowout that she has so this is just a really great look overall including the hairstyle which leads me to this square necklines this is something that is not always as easy to find as like a crew neck or a, or a scoop or a v-neck. I really encourage you to pick one up and give it a try because square necklines can really do a lot for ladies, especially if you're curvy or really busty. Square necklines can be really, really great for you because that strong angle creates contrast to the roundness of your shape. Also, if you have, for example, a more apple body type or you have a rounder torso, rounded shoulders, these types of things can benefit from the contrast of a square neckline. It's also really helpful if you have a short neck. All right, let's move on to the group photo problem that Meghan Markle had. This is not a Meghan Markle specific issue, but there really was no reason why she continually disregarded the color scheme guidance or, or requests for events. She like kind of middle fingered the royal family on these a lot because they were being photographed on these types of special occasions or on official duties and outings. For example, this christening here, they typically asked people to wear a certain set of colors. For example, red, white, and blue for Commonwealth Day or shades of blue and white for Louis' christening. This is just for the benefit of the photography. Really, honestly, that's the main thing it's for so that you're not clashing with each other or too matchy-matchy also, but it's mainly so you don't clash in pictures. And this is something we can all utilize for our family pictures or graduation pictures, reunions, weddings, literally any group gathering. This is why sometimes they will like give out shirts at an event for everybody to pop on for a picture because it just makes the picture look more unifying. It's a trick that photographers use, but it's also kind of common sense. If you're getting pictures that are going to be keepsakes or that are important or that you might use for your business or whatever it is, you don't want it to be clashing and chaotic. You want it to be cohesive cohesive and to look nice to the eyeballs. Meghan Markle just refused to go along with it for whatever petty reason. Selecting a color scheme for your own events can be something as simple as cool colors or warm colors or pastel. Usually any shade of blue or purple or even pink will all go well together. You do need to be careful like for example green is not a great one because 
shades of green can clash. Like if somebody's in lime and somebody's in olive, it does not look good. So, you know, you do have to be mindful. But for the most part, if you let people know, for example, please try to wear some blue, then they might pair it with some black or some white. But if they're wearing blue somewhere, then they will fit nicely into the picture. Because when you're doing an event, you know, people are just wearing what they have or they're shopping by themselves. You're not always going to have the chance to coordinate really well. But if you ask people to stick to a certain color scheme that has a range, like pastels has lots of options, or blues and whites, lots of options. People can always find something to go with themes like that because the main goal is just to avoid clashes where if you know you have one person in blue, one person in orange, one person in olive green, it's going to look not great. Back to just one of the many times that Meghan Markle ignored the very reasonable request to dress in a specific scheme, and in this case it was shades of blue and white at Louis' christening. It looks like the ladies were asked to wear shades of white, like off-white, and the boys, the men, were having blue ties. You know, why, why not go along with that? That's so bizarre to me. So Meg's dress is actually, I'm sorry, I don't usually say this, but this is kind of ugly. The olive color doesn't go well with her skin tone. That's just a bad pair here because she's looking a little bit yellow or jaundice in it. So that just is a sign that that tone wasn't quite right. But it also clashes with the rest of the family in this picture, which is so symbolic now. Why she decided to do this is so beyond me because it looks bad. It's not like she chose a dress that was just so beautiful and perfect for her but just happened to not go with the color scheme. No, it looks like she purposefully chose something that didn't go with the color scheme even though it didn't suit her well and didn't look good. It's so bizarre. The cut of the dress is also not great. You want your clothes to balance and enhance, so enhance your best and add balance where you need it. With her wider shoulders, the silhouette of this outfit exaggerates that. A flare or volume somewhere around the hips or the bottom of the skirt would have made her figure look better rather than worse. I just dislike the poofiness around this upper waist area here, but the sleeves and the neckline are fine for me in my opinion. Why? Why did she have to hold his arm in the picture here? These are formal portraits. If her top were a drop peplum, it would have been so much better. You know, like a peplum that starts lower, like around below the belly button or near the belly button. That would have made this look better too. There were lots of options to get something that looked better, but no. Singling yourself out on purpose in a bad way, you know? Anyone who looks at this would be like, why is she wearing that color? It's so out of place. Maybe because she was never asked what the scheme should be. She was defiant against it, which is so dumb. She was not in charge of the event in any way, shape, or form. So why should she have a say in the, in the color schemes? Like, it just makes zero sense. It was just overall not a great outfit. All right, everybody, that is it for today. Please do like this video if you enjoyed it and share it with anybody else who you think might enjoy coming and joining our community here. Please do subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell icon so you do not miss my upcoming fashion edition. I am featuring Melissa McCarthy in some of next week's video. Thank you so much for being here with me. I hope that you have a happy day ahead and I will see you next time.